Welcome back. An interesting development around the Times of India Literary Festival. The Tehelka founder Tarun Tejpal was dropped, his invitation revoked at that festival organized by the newspaper after they faced massive criticism online for inviting Tarun Tejpal, who is currently on trial facing charges of rape. Now, uh, Tarun Tejpal was going to be part of a panel titled The Tyranny of Power, along with other panelists, uh, Manishankar Ayer as well, the screenplay writer Basharat Peer and the former editor of the Open magazine, Manu Joseph. Now, earlier, the festival director, Bachi Karkaria, had defended the decision to include Tarun Tejpal, but uh, said that uh, they didn't want extraneous noise, finally, and that's why this, uh, this uh, guest and this invitation was indeed dropped. We're being joined now by uh, Siddharth Padarajan, senior journalist, to talk about this, uh, as well as Bachi Karkaria, who's going to be joining us from Mumbai in just a couple of minutes, uh, to talk about the decision behind inviting him first and then revoking this. Uh, but Siddharth Padarajan, I want to ask you, a lot has been said online about inviting Tarun Tejpal to this literary festival. Uh, but we're also a country which uh, sort of premises arguments and uh, premises decisions on the basis of innocent until proven guilt. What was so wrong about this decision, according to you? Well, this is not an ordinary case of uh, a man accused of a crime who's then innocent until proven, who, who's considered innocent until proven guilty. If you follow the manner in which uh, the crime came to public light, you have Mr. Tejpal making uh, what amounts to a full-blown confession in an email, where he acknowledges that he forced himself upon uh, a, a junior colleague. And uh, subsequently, when the matter got blown up into a big criminal case, he has tried to resile from that confession, but the reality is that confession still exists. So uh, knowing what we do about the facts of this case, uh, I think it is highly insensitive uh, and quite shocking for somebody to have tried to include him in, uh, in, a, lit in a discussion on literature uh, of this kind. And uh, I'm happy that, uh, you know, uh, the protests of many of us who were invited or the requests of many people who were invited uh, apart from uh, you know wider public protests uh, has led to the Times of India deciding to uh, to withdraw this invitation. Okay, well, Bachi Karkaria is finally with us uh, from Mumbai. Uh, Ma'am, you, if you can tell us, you said that you had decided to revoke that invitation because you didn't want to deal with extraneous noise. Uh, but there is also a larger issue that is it just the noise and the opposition on social media that made you revoke this? Or did you actually see merit in uh, what Siddharth Vadarajan is saying, for example, that there are serious charges against Mr. Tejpal and uh, he has indeed in the past, in the course of this case, uh, uh, given a written confession in a sense? You know, um, in this particular case, I mean, we ran a very serious lit fest and I think it would be insulting to think that we made a decision off the top of our heads and never thought about the decision. We took a very considered view in inviting Tarun Tejpal. Our overarching theme was power as hero and villain. Tarun Tejpal whether you consider him using power as in villainously or heroically is, was not the issue. The point is that Tarun has been at our litfest before. He's written books, specifically The Valley of Masks, which deals specifically with this whole question of tyranny of power. And because he was, uh, apart from the fact of what Siddharth said about him having made the confession, as far as the law is concerned, he is still an accused and therefore we thought that he's not convicted and therefore we thought he was a legitimate choice for that panel. So it's not as if that panel was tailor-made. One moment. It's not as if that panel was tailor-made for the rehabilitation as a lot of people have said, including Mr. Vardrajan uh, of Mr. Ta of uh, Tarun Tejpal. If anything, if anything, that kind of panel would have put him on the back foot. There was never a question of the case being discussed because uh, because it is sub judice right and then for the you know for the larger public to say oh don't give him a platform he's done all these heinous acts i mean i think that's going to another extreme okay ma'am so given me. given that you stand by the decision to invite him you say it was a considered decision there is a principle of innocent until proven guilty the case was sub judice it was not going to be raised uh, two questions really come to mind one is that this would have been an open platform so people could have asked him really anything they wanted to Secondly, if you did stand by your decision to invite no, him, no, why did not, you, they could not. 
if you did stand by the decision to invite him, why did you revoke that invitation then in that case? I will tell you. I will tell you. You know the point is that we have seen all these years. All these years, you know, we had every virtually every lip test, every pink test. Deteriorating into controversy. That all the panelists, all the wonderful panels that have been put together, are all thrown aside because one participant or right. somebody on the other right. side. You know, Ma'am, I think we need to we need to adjust your microphone. Uh, we, we'll just have them do that, and then we'll come back to you, Siddharth Vardarajan. I want you to come in on this. Uh, we're hearing two two things from Bachi Karkaria. One is standing by the decision to invite Tarun Tejpal, but at the same time, they are, they've also revoked that invitation. So, so what is it? Look, I don't want to get into uh, the ingredients that went into the decision to invite him or disinvite him. I'm just I think I think the, I think they made a mistake, uh, and I'm glad that for whatever reason they've decided uh, to uh, to change course. I think that's where the you know that's as far as I'm concerned that's enough uh, you know. Uh, but the wider issue, I think this is a reflection of the way in which uh, I think somewhere down the line we need to ask ourselves as a society, uh, what is our our public attitude towards uh, sexual violence, crimes against women of this kind? Uh, don't uh, victims have rights? Uh, don't the you know this is this is here this is a case where uh, we know that uh, Mr. Taj, Tejpal through his lawyer and family members have uh, engage, have have tried to malign the reputation of the victim. Uh, 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 about three or four months ago, several journalists wrote articles based on uh, footage that they they ought not to have seen. Uh, this is footage of the CCTV. Uh, uh, that was provided to Mr. Tejpal's uh, law counsel by the court on the condition that this not be shown to anybody else. And this stuff is made available, and and articles are uh, you know favorable to Mr. Tejpal are then sort of planted here and there in the media. So against this backdrop, you know, when you when you have this kind of an attitude, I think it's it's really really unfortunate and shocking that um, uh, one could have thought of. Uh, inviting Mr. Tejpal as if you know this is simply just another case that's up to this. He's on right. bail. What does it matter? Okay. All right. Uh, that's Ms. not the case. It's, you know, uh, can uh, I come back? Since yeah. My... Yes, Ms. Karkaria, just just coming to you. In fact, the, that that's an interesting point also that's being raised. That you know, on the one hand, yes, uh, the, this case is uh, sub judice. There are uh, legal proceedings going on, but there is also a wider issue of perception. And as media, we ourselves rail in instances where, uh, for example, take uh, uh, the the minister Nihal Chand. I mean, he's got serious cases. Similar cases in Rajasthan when he was uh, appointed minister, there was an uproar over that as well. So, as media people, when we are pointing the finger, should we not therefore also be cognizant of our role uh, and, and how responsibly we should be uh, conducting ourselves? You know, I mean, I don't think as a woman and as a journalist and as a senior journalist, I need to get any lessons from anyone, including my good friend Siddharth on sexual harassment and how to deal with it. I think I've written enough about it to establish my credentials. I also don't think that this is the place where we argue out the merits of, of Tarun Tejpal's case, what was shown on CCTV, what was not. As an accused, maybe he has every right to try to defend himself and to keep himself out of jail as, as the victim has to, to kind of take her stand. Right. I'm, I'm going by all that. <clears throat> I want to just come back to the fact which you asked me before you lost uh, before you lost my audio that why did we revoke our decision right as i'm trying to, as i was trying to tell you at that point that we have put a whole lot of effort into this lip fest we've been working at it since january we've got very serious panelists we've got very serious subjects and we simply did not want all that to be thrown away because there was this whole big if I'm sorry to use the word lynch mob happening and that would have become the media story. We did not want our lit fest to become into a media controversy. We have stayed away from all that sound. We have tried to have more light at our festivals. <clears throat> For whatever unfortunate reasons, other festivals have got hijacked, whether it was Jaipur, whether it was uh, Mr. Girish Karnad at the own Mumbai lit fest, right. whether it was Tarun's own behavior and action at his own thing fest. 
you know nobody then talked about all the serious panels the serious panelists nobody talked about so, that ma'am is that not that's doing a great is, disservice when you say you had considered this uh, right at the beginning when you made the invitations had you not perhaps thought this through to the kind of reaction or backlash it would uh, elicit even from some of the the people who were meant to be partaking in that lit fest you know maybe we did maybe we did but you know this whole business of if you like the tyranny of twitter is also something that i would be a little uh, wary about and i would not like to think that this decision has been taken under duress from the twitter twitterati i will say no okay. i will say it is definitely what i will maintain that we did not want the rest of our festival to be jeopardized by what was only one part of our festival we have a hundred authors we have three panels every single day for the three days we've got very engaged audiences our audiences expect something great from our panelists and we did not want them to be you know being subjected to you know to to something that really wasn't central to this right to this okay all right it's so you didn't you didn't happened. want the attention to be taken away from serious writing and uh, serious authors 100%. who were 100% right okay so that is that is that uh, a, a valid enough reason for them to have considered something taken a decision and then changed their mind uh, given all the reactions look as i said earlier i mean i think i think they made uh, the the wrong judgment call in deciding to invite him and i'm glad that they've reversed themselves for whatever reason i think what i think the argument bachi is giving is perfectly valid it is a fact that uh, the entire festival would have been derailed by uh, mr tejpal's presence and the controversy that that was going to evoke many participants may not have turned up uh, and the character of the festival would obviously have changed so i think that you know fair enough for, you know they've uh, i'm not going to fault them on the logic by which they have uh, come around to disinviting mr tejpal uh, and i think that's where uh, the matter should rest right and that's where that that is indeed where the matter rests uh, it's it's certainly an interesting uh, predicament siddharth that you know miss karkari has also said that uh, she doesn't uh, want to be told by uh, you or anybody else how to conduct her journalism and that's a criticism that she uh, she's putting forward but yeah. certainly I, i'd like to ask you nonetheless that question that i was asking her we as media uh, find ourselves many uh, many a time in situations where somebody accused of serious crimes is being put in a position of power uh, whatever those cases may be they range from everything from hate speech to sexual violence to murder to uh, to you name it and and given that we find ourselves in that position critiquing and questioning the system uh, should we be a little more careful i'm asking you yes i i think you know it's this is a judgment everybody uh, you know we are all confronted by situations where you end up uh, you know either in in the same room or same panel or same conference uh, interacting with somebody who's quite unsavory so you know i'm not i don't want to moralize on this uh, you know uh, but she's absolutely right that i'm you know i'm the last person to uh, uh, th that she you know i mean uh, she knows the issues involved with uh, uh, violence against women and sexual harassment and far be for, for me to uh uh you know uh, give her a lecture on this so i didn't mean to suggest that but i think that you know, th there's people take judgments on you know you take a decision and i think uh, i think they took a wrong call on this quite frankly because uh simply because uh, of the the circumstances of this case question y yes ma'am go ahead go ahead yeah no no sorry to that did you want to finish so that no, no, would I'm you like to finish the circumstances of this case Yeah, just I, I mean, I've seen the 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 the, the confession that uh, Tejpal made, which you know has presented an an unalterable fact in in our in, in our midst. Uh, I think this is really what uh, on on which uh, on on what this debate turns. So you know, so it, you can't simply say that you this know, is. You know, but this uh, uh, the uh, question, case. the question that was asked, the question that was asked was about media and media's responsibility. I'm really sorry to have to say that there's such a huge hypocrisy out there. and i'm not talking about siddharth who's my good friend and old colleague but there's such a big hypocrisy out there the kind of pompousness that has come from people who otherwise had no problem rubbing shoulders with tarun tejpal in the days when he hadn't fallen were at the think fest knowing all about even all the other issues of tejpal which have come back and this is the whole point about this case that this is a it's not been a case about sexual harassment it has become a case where everybody has fired their own guns 
from the shoulders of the girl the very unfortunate girl who was at the the target of of uh, tarun provided that he is actually proved guilty right so here you know people would have gone to the think fest everyone knew what was happening everyone knew whether you know of all the stories which tumbled out afterwards of you know mr tejpal's unsavory business dealings court and court but they were all very happy going right. to the think fest and rubbing shoulders with all the no, other but, people okay. and being Maya, said oh Maya i am invited to yes, this forum yes very, very nobody, quickly nobody said yeah. okay, anything ma then all right so that respond very quickly we've got to wrap this discussion so very quickly no i think it's you know but she mentioned the the standpoint of the, you know the victim i think it's important that we remember the standpoint of the victim here right. what what must she be going through when you when the facts of the case are in the public domain you have i mean but she said everybody has the right to defend mr tejpal has the right to defend himself in court not right. to supply plant evidence here and then have stories in the media right okay. so from her point of view here was here was a person accused no 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 that okay. you put his own stories uh, in, into the stories public domain have come being, from both being normalized okay. in some stories way stories have think, come from think, both sides i think so that stories have come from both sides and i think that's sides. the crux man i'm sorry that's the crux ma'am in fact there are two sides to this uh, to this story as well i mean uh, on the one yeah, hand it's not as if yeah. only it's not only as if uh, there have been no friends of the victim right right and, and i don't want it okay. to be as if all i'm right. on tarun Ms. side Nagarya, and not on the side of the victim mr rajan we're completely out of time we yeah, have to wrap yeah but i'm saying evidence evidence we'll evidence have... has not been illegally supplied right. in the media we'll by, you know by okay. the by, by evidence the side evidence there. that that is placed in court a trial that's underway a decision that was taken and finally revoked many questions still we have to wrap it at that thank you uh, bachi karkarian siddharth vardarajan for joining me on this debate tonight.